Hello, I'm Dr. Sharita Golden, Vice President and Chief Diversity Officer for Johns Hopkins Medicine. We created this educational series for you on the COVID-19 vaccine because we want you, our employees, to be able to make the most informed decisions for yourselves. We have gathered experts across our organization to contribute to this video series, and we welcome you to watch either the entire series or just those components that are most relevant to you. Thank you. So I'm going to talk um, for the rest of the study about the two vaccines that we're likely to have licensed and available, not licensed, the two vaccines we're likely to have authorized and available in the United States over the next few weeks. Um, and I'm, I'm parsing my words because a licensure takes longer and takes more data but the FDA is now um, looking to authorize these two vaccines using what is called an emergency youth authorization for, for us to be able to use these vaccines in the pandemic until they have all of the data that they need for the full licensure. Um, the two vaccines both use RNA technology. Um, this is a brand new technology that has been developed over the last couple of decades to respond quickly to emerging um, pandemic threats. There is no current licensed vaccine that is using this technology, but it's an incredibly fast technology to create. All you need is the sequence of the virus, and you can plug it into the technology that you have in order to make, um, to make vaccines against it. So in this case, both of these vaccines use the RNA for the spike protein, and the spike is what is on the surface of the coronavirus that gives it its shape um, and its uh, name. Um, the spike is what's used to bind to human cells and invade. Um, and so by targeting these spike proteins, we can prevent infection. So we just have a piece of the RNA from the spike protein. It's put inside of a lipid coat, um, which allows the RNA to be picked up by the cells. When it's picked up by the cells, it stays in the cytoplasm of the cells where ribosomes come and they make our, make the, our, take the RNA and make it into proteins. And so our cells are making little bits of the spike protein. It's not the whole virus. It can't make us sick, but these spike proteins that our cells make will trigger our immune system to respond to them. And so the next time we see that spike protein, when it's attached to a virus, we'll say, we know what this is, our immune system can respond to it, and we don't get sick. Um, this RNA is, stays in the cytoplasm, so it stays in the outer part of the cell. It, it degrades very quickly. Our cells are used to dealing with many, many RNAs on a regular basis. These are the messages that our cells use in order to make proteins, in order to communicate with one another. Um, they don't last very long. They don't go into the nucleus where the DNA and the genetic material of the cell is, and they don't in any way affect our genetic material. So they're used to make proteins that our immune system responds to, and then they degrade and go away. So the two RNA vaccines that, are, that we're gonna talk about a little bit further are the Moderna mRNA vaccine, which started its phase one in March of 2020 and started the phase three trial on July 27th. And then the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine, also an mRNA vaccine that started its phase one in Germany and the US in April, and also started its combined phase two, three study in July um, of this year. 